actually, mm -hmm. for causing harm in the world. And I'm actually going to be producing a documentary that shortly on the evils of religion. It's very easy to show that religion causes more harm than no religion. That's one reason I think that both of us are atheists, because you will never see an atheist suicide bomber. Obviously Ever. not. No. <laughs> you won't see no. an atheist suicide bomber. You won't see an atheist killing for any religious person, for any religious reason, excuse me. And besides um, one particular point, everybody says, well, look at Hitler. He was an atheist. No, he study was. the facts. He was actually a Catholic. And there's many times where he condemned atheism in many of his speeches. So don't believe everything you hear when it comes to I, religious talk, especially I, about, uh, about Hitler. I'm told every Nazi soldier's belt buckle said, God is with us mm -hmm. on it. And in Mein Kampf, Hitler referred to God many times. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a lie that he was an atheist. But I don't want to come across that atheists are holier than thou. I think there are... Actually, I think they are. <laughs> well, I think being an atheist and being freed from religion is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of atheists, we're just people like anybody else. And some atheists have done some terrible things in Cambodia and mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, but, but they I would also things, argue they why didn't, did they do things? They didn't do it under the name of atheism. That's right. They did it under the name of an ideology. That's correct. And that's Very much the like problem. North Korea. Uh, what I tell people is, look at my atheism the way you look at not believing in mermaids. If you don't believe mermaids exist, are mm -hmm. you likely to go out and kill people because you don't believe mermaids exist? People very seldom go out and kill people for what they don't believe in. Mm -hmm. But they do if they have a strong belief in a certain ideology, be it religious, political. Right. And that happen. is the problem in the world, really. Mm -hmm. It's people who get rigidly glued to these crazy ideologies and I say crazy, I think any ideology is crazy that advocates killing lots of people for mm -hmm. that ideology. Well, look at Jim Jones. Exactly. Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate, and exactly. And don't That's tell crazy. me, don't tell me, well, it is crazy, and all those, the, the uh, religionists that I talk to, many pastors down at the Huntington Beach Pier, which I go to occasionally, uh, this weekend, for instance, say, that's not my religion. But yes, it is the religion, and don't you think once that you can't drink the Kool-Aid if you're committed to that particular religion. You mm -hmm. can drink the Kool-Aid like Jim Jones of Peoples did. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing how close that is because if you believe in your faith, you're drinking the wine for, on the sacrament I've, during the Eucharist, excuse me, and uh, it's very easy for some nut job to go ahead and convince people, especially if they're in another country on a compound, that's very easy. Heaven's mm -hmm. Gate was, was totally free. People could leave whenever they want to and they still committed suicide. I don't know, I think it was uh, 32, 34 people, I'm not sure about yeah, that. Yeah, something but this, like is, that. this is the extreme harm. Let's take a look at some of the smaller harms that they cause. And one of the smaller harms that I'm attuned to is the psychological harm of children that believe in Christianity, that they're going to go to hell for masturbating, that they're going to go to hell for not believing in God. The concept of hell itself is one of the worst things about Christianity, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sure, you've talked to former Christians turned atheists, many of them that I've talked to said one of the primal fears they had about moving away from their Christianity mm -hmm. was that they would go to hell. Mm -hmm. What a horrible, negative kind of, I mean, I can't imagine browbeating people into believing something using this threat that if they don't, they're going to be punished eternally in hell by, of all things, a loving, caring God. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, this whole th idea of hell is one of the worst aspects of Christianity, in my opinion. Well, let's take a look at the, the actually, the, the um, let's discover a little bit about what, <clears throat> what hell is like. Hell is an, an eternal damnation for eternity. Now, I'm on this earth maybe 75, 85 years, 90 if I'm lucky, right? Mm -hmm. Most people do good things most of the time. That's Shermer's viewpoint, and I agree with that. Most people do good things most of the time. If we sin a little bit, and we, then the religionists say we're going to hell, let's, take, let's say I was really bad for the equivalent of a week during my entire lifetime, you know, a week of, of awake days or awake hours that I was doing something bad. Is that fair to actually condemn somebody for eternity for one week or even a day or even a minute of sin, and that's what the religionists believe, of course, that if you commit a sin, you can go to hell forever for 
even a sin. Even, now, now, I can imagine if you went out and slaughtered and murdered and you were Hitler or, or you basically were a real ass bite. I don't know if I could say the other word on cable TV, but mm -hmm. I won't. <laughs> and, and yes, you know, maybe, okay, you deserved hell for 80 years if you were an ass bite for 80 years. <laughs> but for eternity? Oh, it's, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And, uh, well, I heard uh, a leading Bible scholar talk about where these concepts came from in the first place. It reflected early on in the Bible, the Jewish, uh, or should I say the Hebrew thought, they never had a concept of heaven in the and Old hell. Testament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, they believe that when you die, the soul goes to a place called Sheol, S H E O L, I believe. It's a pit in the ground. Mm -hmm. A very odd concept. And of course, the Hebrews, what became into the Jewish culture, are very here and now oriented. They're not into heaven and hell. They're into making life better now. Very which cultural, is why you, theistic. Yeah, people, and then yes. why you have so many uh, Jewish people that have hold high positions in academia because of that good, in my opinion, humanistic thinking that came out of Judaism that get involved with the here and now, mm -hmm. educate, do good works here and now, don't worry about this heaven and hell. Well, you touched on uh, science. Let's take a look at the Academy of Sciences, which is has, uh, I think that there were around 1,400, 1,500 people in the Academy of Sciences. Which National, is Academy National Academy of Sciences, Sciences correct. And 93% don't believe in a personal God. Right. And that was the actual question. Not God, but personal God, meaning right. a Savior, right? Right. Well, so like the God who answers prayers and the kind of God most Americans believe That's in. right. Now, why do you think that 93% of our best scientists, the smartest people in the U.S., basically, I don't think we need to answer that question. Yep. I think it's obvious. They know how the universe works. Mm -hmm. They're smart people. Interestingly, the for the American general population, that figure has turned, turned completely around. 92 to 95 percent Americans do believe in a traditional God. Mm -hmm. So every mm -hmm. other uh, Western democracy or every other democracy, first world democracy in the world, Japan, mm -hmm. uh, Euro uh, the European countries, mm -hmm. religious belief has declined dramatically. The churches are empty. I read a figure that in Israel, 18% of the population call themselves atheists. Mm -hmm. That's double here, at yeah. least double what we put here. So in my that opinion, America, mm -hmm. when it comes to religion, America is a third world country in my mm -hmm. opinion. We still have this Bible Belt thing, which the whole idea of biblical literalism and all that stuff really started in America. That's that's a relatively new thing. That's right. Literalism meaning that we actually yeah, believe yeah, in Adam yeah, and Eve, yeah, original that, sin, yeah, which right. I think is a horrible concept to begin with. Yeah. You know, what happened? Where is the original sin? How was the original sin passed on to father to son? How is that physically done? It's not physically done. There's no natural explanation, and it's all superstition. And I would say that the belief that Christ rose from the dead and ascended into heaven is on an equal par with that belief. They're both superstitions. The only difference is the Christ one is given a high degree of credibility in our mm -hmm. culture because our predominant religion is Christianity. But they're not different in kind. There's not a shred of evidence for either one of those. <laughs> well, I, uh, I should say there's not a shred of extra biblical evidence. Biblical historians are at major universities. Are, I read a Van Harvey, I believe, who was at Stanford, the religious department said to the, and I'm paraphrasing the quote I read in the LA Times, to the biblical historian, much of the traditionally held beliefs about Jesus are regarded with considerable skepticism, mm -hmm. which would include the, re the miracles and the resurrection and all that. You'll find there a are reasons of, for that. You'll find a little bit of uh, discrepancy <laughs> among all the religionists because that's, a, that's true. Me most religious scholars don't take a lot of the biblical uh, stories literally. And if they don't take some of them literally, which ones should they take literally? Well, the reason they don't, however, is because there's been so much information come out about how the New Testament was put, how the Gospels were put together, mm -hmm. and that so much attributed to Jesus, a lot of the sayings attributed to Jesus, a lot of the deeds, the raising of Lazarus, for example. There's a very similar tale in the Old Testament, I believe, in... Ezekiel, and then, but I could be wrong about that, but there's an Egyptian tale that's very similar. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the religions that preceded Christianity, the mm -hmm. Near Eastern religions, you'll find a lot of things. Every, for example, every Persian king's birth or death was heralded by a celestial event, a star appearing in the sky, mm -hmm. a comet, mm -hmm. virgin births were a dime a dozen. <laughs> And uh, being resurrected. Yeah, that's right. Being and even three days rising, three days rising afterwards. Three days, Osir I, Osiris and Horus, uh, yeah, the Egyptian the, god. So there are many motifs, many mm -hmm. myths that 
predate Christianity that were applied to Jesus, especially those birth stories. I mean, mm -hmm. very few scholars believe Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And uh, but that whole story, you really, if you look at the way it was put together, it looks like it was invented to place Jesus' birth there in order mm -hmm. to fulfill Old Testament prophecy of, of the yeah. Savior is going to be I do have him. one important uh, challenge to Christians out there. And I don't know if you've heard this. Please use this in the future because I think it's a great challenge. Find me one unique attribute of Jesus. The virgin births, the crucifixion, the ascension, the miracles that he did, any of the biblical stories of Jesus. One original attribute of Jesus and email me because you'll find after studying them, and this is a challenge to you, please study this. There is not one original attribute. All of the attributes of Jesus came from previous gods and previous legends of kings. Yes. Now, this is what I challenge Christians to do. There is not one unique thing about the Bible. It's basically a hodgepodge of all the, exactly. the paganistic Je uh, religions before him. Jesus is a patchwork quilt of various sayings, beliefs, and myths and miracle stories that existed long before he was born. Mm -hmm. No question, there's no question about that because you can look at previous writings and you can see that stuff mm -hmm. as I mentioned it. You could see ancient text on the Egyptian pyramids. You'll need, of course, an Egyptologist to translate it for right. you. Right. But you could see it right there, Horus died, rose three days later, mm -hmm. right there, born of a virgin. Right. And this is where it's very simple to see the patchwork that you're talking about coming from Jesus and making more and more into a legend. If you look at the books historically written from uh, Mark, from Paul actually, to Mark, to Luke, to John, uh, and Matthew, and then John, if you look at, that, at all the books in a linear fashion, you could see how it was built upon. And each particular book rose Jesus more to a higher level. Yes, right. Oh, finally, with John is way out there. I oh, mean, yeah. that's that's uh, Luke 14 attributed to Jesus. Quote: Any man that comes to me and does not hate his mother and his father, his brother and his sister, I can't remember what else it said, and his mm -hmm. own life cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said, I'm exactly. sorry, but that leaves me out. I would never <laughs> hate my family to become a Christian. Well, the Jehovah's Witness, of course, they always do, had a response. Well, it doesn't mean hate your family. It means love them less than God. And so fundamentalist Christians at Biola, as you mentioned earlier, spend eons of time and thousands of tons of ink trying to wrestle with all of the text of the Bible. I call it rubberizing or talent. Elasticizing <laughs> the Bible to make what the Bible actually says mm -hmm. fit with contemporary morality and thinking. Frankly, I don't think it works, uh, but they are very good at doing that. But that concludes this particular episode. We're out of time. Thank you very much for, for it coming a lot today. Of fun. You like it's it? Right. Okay, great. Yeah, and look forward to seeing more Orange County Atheists TV show on YouTube and in 16 cities in Orange County, California. Thanks again, Robert. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.